Can zone two training help you improve your VO2 max? This is what we're gonna see in this video today. We're gonna to start by talking about what is zone two, what is VO2 max, defining those terms clearly. Then we'll see what impact zone two can have on your VO2 max and stay until the end of the video where I'll talk to you about what type of training I would recommend in order to best improve your VO2 max. If you're new to the channel, my name is Sean. I help CrossFit athletes improve their endurance so that they can train more and perform better. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more videos like these in the future. So let's start by defining terms. What is zone two training? So zone two training is low intensity, continuous training. Easy training, base training. There's lots of different terms that are used. Zone two is definitely the most popular nowadays. But essentially, it's a type of training that really forms the base of any endurance sport and allows you to then layer on intensity and performance on top of that capacity, if you will. Uh, so again, it's very popular in endurance sports. It's starting to gain traction in other disciplines, uh, in CrossFit and other high intensity sports, MMA and such. And I also see it as an important part of any health oriented uh, training regime uh, because we need to move we are human after all and we have evolved from people that walked many hours a day every single day all year round and our sedentary lifestyle today does not push us to go out and walk which is what i'm doing right now i'm just having a little gander uh, talking to you guys so i think zone two is important both for performance in endurance sports but also performance and longevity in all uh, different type of sports. So this is the start on defining zone two. Now, what is VO2 max? VO2 max is your maximum oxygen consumption. So your body utilizes oxygen every single second, every single instant in order for your cells to stay in place and for energy to flow through your body. And for that process, we cannot escape the use of oxygen. We have to use Oxygen, VO2 max, is simply the expression of the maximum ability that our body has to consume oxygen. It's usually expressed in a relative unit, which would be milliliters per kilo of body weight per minute, or in an absolute unit, which would be milliliters or liters per minute, without counting body weight. And what's interesting with VO2 max is that it's a metric that stands at the intersection between performance and health. Um, it is a prerequisite for endurance performance, and it is a very good indicator of cardiovascular health. And so what you want, regardless of what your goals are, you want to improve, you want to maybe not maximize, but you definitely want to improve your VO2 max up to a solid level because you know it's going to help you uh, on the health side, the longevity side, the recovery side, and also the performance side. Obviously, like I said, VO2 max itself is not uh, sufficient to be a high performer in endurance sports, uh, but it is a prerequisite. prerequisite. So if you, if you have a small VO2 max, you're never going to be able to compete with the best in endurance events. If you have a large VO2 max, then you might get a chance, but you have other things that you need to maximize uh, in order to be the best. We can talk about those factors in a different video. And for non-endurance uh, sports, VO2 max, I still see as something being important. Again, uh, think about general work capacity. Think about your, your ability to do more work. And that goes through VO2 max uh, on some level. And now comes the question, can zone two training help improve your VO2 max? And the answer is a big yes. The reason being that what you're gonna see is that zone two targets a lot of structures that are part of the energy transport and energy utilization uh, kind of framework, right? If we think about utilization of oxygen as being your aerobic system, well, all the components or most of the components of your aerobic system are going to be strengthened, are going to be improved by zone two training. We're gonna go through them one by one right now. Let's start about, let's start where uh, the oxygen consumption actually happens in our bodies, which is inside our cells, our muscle cells, and more precisely inside our mitochondria. The mitochondria used to be a bacteria many, 
millions of years ago that fused with unicellular organisms and today is the only reason we're around uh the, it's pretty it's pretty interesting to think about the fact that without mitochondria inside our cells and there's literally mitochondria in almost every single cell in our body we cannot utilize oxygen right oxygen is a poison to the body if it's not uh, used by the mitochondria itself and so the mitochondria is like a network inside your muscle fibers that transports oxygen transports uh, energy substrates and obviously utilizes oxygen directly then and there and mitochondria is one thing that you're going to improve through zone two training zone two one of the features is like i said before it's very easy work it's very low intensity and so you can do a lot of it and volume is one of the main drivers of adaptation with low intensity training and one thing that we're going to improve uh, as i talked about with uh, david bishop who's one of the number one researchers in the world of mitochondrial development uh, i'll put the link to the podcast in here um, and that zone two is going to help you really improve your mitochondrial capacity and that is one of the main features of a, a large vo2 max is be, having the infrastructure right so zone two helps you build that infrastructure at the muscle fiber level at the cellular level uh, another thing that's going to be improved obviously by zone two training is all the aerobic enzymes that are necessary for the utilization of oxygen you're also going to improve your capillary density so how many little vessels little capillaries are around each muscle fiber you can think about them like a gate right it's the gate through which oxygen passes when it goes from your blood from your uh, red blood cells your hemoglobin into the muscle and then into the uh, mitochondria itself and so the more capillaries you have the more oxygen you can get from your blood into the muscle cell and that's a good that's good news for a vo2 max so that's improved as well uh, we also have some especially for new uh, newcomers to low intensity we most likely have some oxygen transport improvement uh, through probably some that's probably gonna be more plasma volume uh, adaptation so essentially just more blood supply although that would probably be best improved by medium intensity work that kind of tempo threshold sweet spot whatever we want to call it um, type of training but we are also going to get some of this and then the last one the big one uh, with zone 2 training and no that doesn't happen overnight yes it takes months and years to develop but through low intensity training what you're going to do is essentially make your heart bigger you're going to stretch that left ventricle and allow it to pump more blood into your system with each single beat and that's again good news for vo2 max we know that uh, cardiac output which is the uh, product of heart rate multiplied by uh, how much blood you actually pump uh, with each beat and that gives you the number of liters of blood you can pump by uh, per minute sorry uh, i mix up my french and my english sometimes uh, so and that's one of the main drivers of vo2 max so if you want a large vo2 max you need a large heart and that type of low intensity training continuous training is really going to help with making your heart bigger making your left ventricle bigger and stronger and able to push more blood and those are the main adaptations that i can think of off the top of my head that, that are going to directly influence vo2 max when it comes to zone 2 training so you can see that uh, again a lot of the structures that are uh, involved in that energy tra or oxygen transport and uh, oxygen utilization system are going to be improved uh, through VO2, sorry, through uh, zone two training. Now, as for what the best session is to improve your VO2 max, um, it might sound like a cop out response, but I truly think that it's the best one that I can give. If you want to improve your VO2 max, the best training you can do is all of the above zone two, zone three, zone four, zone five, zone six, maybe a little bit less, zone seven. Sometimes um, if we think about six as long sprints and seven as short sprints those are going to improve your two max but i would say that the uh, development potential is smaller the higher you go in the intensity scale so essentially the 
uh, if, you, if you do some really high intensity work, some sprint interval training, for example, uh, it's really, really hard, but it does have a pretty quick payoff, uh, but it also is not going to keep improving over years and years um, because there we're more uh, worried about or we're more going to improve the ability of, let's say, one unit of mitochondria to use as much oxygen as possible per unit of time. So we could talk about mitochondrial function that is improved by sprint interval training, whereas like we said before, the low intensity uh, is probably going to be more geared towards the capacity side, right? Just more volume of mitochondria inside our cells. Uh, for somebody sedentary, I believe it's between 3 and 4% of your um, muscular cells that are comprised of mitochondria. Uh, for elite cross-country skiers, it could go up to 9% uh, of their uh, muscle cell volume. And for... Um, what's the name of that little bird? The, the little bird that flies super quick with its wings. In French, it's called a colibri. I forget what it's called in English now. Anyway, uh, up to 35% of this guy's uh, cells are filled with mitochondria, which explains how it can have one or why it has one of the highest mitochondria or highest VO2 max in the uh, animal kingdom, upwards of 600 milliliters per kilo per minute. Um, without straining it i think they got it out above a thousand milliliters per kilo per minute by removing some of the uh, density of air uh, and essentially making them flop their wings faster anyway i digress back to what i was saying before the best training is uh, all training and a good va variation across time in your uh, approach to training so if you start with let's call it a, a polarized block where you're going to do mostly low intensity and high intensity training. That's great for VO2 max. And then you can go and do another cycle with uh, maybe more pyramidal approach where you're going to do some low and some medium intensity mostly and maybe a little bit of high intensity. You can also have a sprint cycle where you're going to do two or three weeks of uh, very high intensity training. Um, always coupled with some low intensity for better recovery. But I, I really think that if you want to develop that VO2 max, you want to have a kind of a broad approach and make sure you train in many different ways. And this is also the best way to keep you progressing over time. Um, the, the best stimulus is the one you've never had. The best training is the one you've never done. So don't be afraid to, to switch up your training when you're stagnating, when you feel like you hit a plateau because you've been doing the same thing over and over and over again. It's not bad to do the same thing over and over again uh, until it stops working. Then you should do something different. Uh, so here are some thoughts on VO2 max in zone two. I also wrote a monster article on my blog about VO2 max. Uh, I will put that in the description for you to go check out. I look forward to reading your comments and knowing what topics you'd like me to tackle on the channel. I'm really working on pushing some more English content out both here on the channel and on the blog. So make sure you leave comments. Let me know what you want me to talk about next. And since I don't get a, a ton of comments right now in English yet, uh, we're gonna get there guys, thanks to you. Um, I, uh, there's a big chance that if you ask a question, I will use it as a, as a topic for a future video. All right, thanks for checking in and I will see you uh, in the next video. Take care.